Welcome back. So in previous videos, we looked at um, the different types of linear transformations, uh, the geometry of the different types of linear transformations in R2. We looked at reflections through a line, the three basic reflections that can be represented by an elementary matrix were the reflections across one of the axes, the x-axis or the y-axis, or a reflection across the line y equals x. And we looked at how you could get another reflection uh, across another line by combining reflections across either axis or the line y equals x, how to combine those um, elementary matrices to get another matrix, another reflection. And then we looked at expansions and contractions. There were vertical expansions and vertical contractions, and there were horizontal expansions and horizontal contractions. And we looked at those and we saw that those are also represented by elementary matrices. And then the third type was a shear. A vertical shear or horizontal shear is a vertical shift or horizontal shift by an amount proportional to either the vertical component or horizontal component. So that was kind of complicated. So a vertical shear is a vertical shift by an amount proportional to the horizontal component. And a horizontal shift was a hor sorry, a horizontal shear was a horizontal shift by an amount proportional to the vertical component. So those were different from expansions and contractions, and we saw that difference. So now, in this video, we're concerned with the image of a particular region in the plane under different linear transformations. So we're going to look at the image of the unit square under different linear transformations. So what is it? The unit square has vertices. It's a square with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1. And so that region looks like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a vertical shear, what that image will look like, what the image of this square looks like under a particular vertical shear. So we're going to use this vertical shear. It's going to take xy to the vector x, comma, and now the second component has to be shifted by an amount proportional to x, so we're going to take y and add 3x to it. So this changes each vector differently, right? Depending on what their what the horizontal component was, that tells us how much to shift the y component, the vertical component. So let's look at the image of the unit square under this vertical shear. So we're going to um, find the images of the four vertices and then connect them. So the two vertices that lie on the y-axis both have x, uh, sorry, first component or horizontal component, 0. So 0, 0, and 0, 1. So that means that the image, for example, the image of 0, 0 under this shear is going to be the vertical shift by an amount three times the first component, three times zero. So it's not going to be shifted at all. So the first component remains the same. The second component isn't shifted. So zero, zero is a fixed point. And the same thing with zero, one. The first component will not change. It'll be zero. The second component will be shifted by an amount equal to three times zero or nothing. So 0, 1 is also a fixed point. So the image of 0, 1 is 0, 1. The image of 0, 0 is 0, 0. The other two vertices will be shifted. So because the first component is 1, the second component will be shifted by 3 times 1, or 3. So both of those vertices are shifted upward by an amount 3. So for example, t of 1, 1 is 1, comma 1 plus 
3 times 1, or 1, 4. And the other one is 1, 3. So if I connect those dots and fill in the region, we see that it is not a square, it's not even a rectangle. So this is the image of the unit square under that vertical shear. So let's compare that to the image of the, of the unit square under a vertical expansion. So let's look at the expansion t of xy equals x comma 3y. So we are going to multiply every vector, every, the second component of every single vector by 3. So the vector 0, 0, uh, if we multiply the second component by 3, we just get 0, 0. So that is a fixed point. But 0, 1 is not a fixed point. That will get, sh that will get um, transformed into 0, 3. So that gets stretched upward. So all of the vertices look like this. Anything that didn't have a zero in the second component got stretched upward by a factor of three. And if we connect those dots and fill in the region, it looks like this. So that's a rectangle. It's the image of the unit square under the vertical expansion. And um, we can see that it looks totally different from the image under the vertical shear. So one interesting fact that is not covered in our textbook but is a really useful fact for a lot of people who have to use uh, linear transformations in their work and in particular are interested in specific regions and how they're transformed, uh, two-dimensional regions and how they're transformed, an interesting fact is that shears preserve area. And I'm not going to prove that fact, but um, we can see that the unit square has area 1. The image of the unit square under the vertical expansion, so this tall rectangle at the bottom, does not have area 1. It has area Three, three times one. But it turns out that the image under the shear, the one above, that is not a rectangle, if you compute the area of that region, you'll find that it is one. So the shear preserves the area of the unit square, but the expansion does not. So that's an interesting fact you won't find, I don't believe, you'll find that in our textbook. So that's a, um, what it looks like, and you can um, play around with reflections. We just looked at a shear and an expansion, and you can look at reflections and what reflections do to the unit square. So there's one remaining video after this where we do another example.